scripture declares that by faith Enoch was translated. There is nothing that cannot change by faith. Jesus told his friends, Mary and Martha, the other day, say, if only you will believe, you will see the glory of God. That is talking about the resurrection of their brother Lazarus. If only you will believe. The Lord is speaking to you this morning. If only you can believe. There is nothing that cannot change. In fact, there is no position or place you are not already translated to already. If you believe. Colossians chapter 1 verse number 13. Who had delivered us from the dominion of darkness. And has translated us to the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. Amen. This morning by the spirit of the Lord I see translations. Amen. I see translations. Amen. From joblessness to miracle jobs. Amen. From expectant mother to concepted mothers. Amen. With twins and triplets. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I see translation. Those whose hearts have been broken by the challenges of life. The vicissitudes of life. I see the Lord visit you and bring you to that place, whom that place you have always desired in the precious name of Jesus. Matter of fact, the Lord will exceed the expectations uh, by the operations of faith in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Can you put the hands together for Jesus for the choir? God bless you. Voice of good news and the voice of redemption. We are blessed by your ministry. Lord will keep taking you higher and higher in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate our Father in the Lord, unavoidably absent. Amen. That for the privilege to stand for him this morning. Amen. Really, I see it as a rare privilege, praise God, to preach this sacred word of truth. This is a word that was preserved from, from disappearance from corruption thousands and thousands and thousands of years by the spirit of the Lord. Most of our patriarchs never had the opportunity to have an assembled word like this. Praise the living God. They never had the privilege of having the collation like this. We are a blessed generation. We are what a blessed generation. When we are talking about faith, we are talking about the word of God. I have a wonderful treasure. The gift of God without measure. We will travel together. My Bible and I. If you lose everything and you have the word of God, then you have everything. Matter of fact, you have lost nothing. But if you seem to have everything and you don't have the word of God, I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. But that will not be your portion. You are here where the word of God is taught. The Lord will keep revealing his word to us. Take us from one level to another, one level of faith to another. Bring us to the position we will be empowered to confront and to conquer various levels of challenges as our knowledge grow and as our faith grow. Put your hands together for Jesus one more time. Amen. Before we take a seat, let's read um, our text scripture this morning. Hebrews 11 verse 1 and 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. If you don't mind, we can read together the count of three. One, two, three, go. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. Let's look at it at, uh, which one do we use now? NIV. Very from NIV, this verse. Let's go. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Amen. Uh, what we are believing the Lord for that is not yet in your hand does not mean it is not a reality. Are you listening to me? That is basically what faith is talking about. Let's read um, 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9. Let's read at the count of three. One, two, three, go. 
For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. This morning we will be teaching us still in the month of our overcoming faith, but our focus this morning will be on faith for financial prosperity. Faith for financial prosperity. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your kingdom is come. Thank you for opening our hearts. Thank you for your spirit that has helped us to be attentive. Thank you for your holy presence in this place. Thank you for the glory of your angels and the divine entities, even the spirits of just men that are fellowshipping with us this morning. Lord, we thank you for the translation that has come to us by virtue of the infusion and injection of the word of God. We give you praise and glory because we know we are changed. We are transformed. We are translated in every area of life. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. If you receive that, put your hands together for Jesus and be seated in heavenly places. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. We're going to be doing something like um, one faith step or one faith move that you're sure going to do this week is that you must as a matter of necessity, if you believe the word of God, bring a soul to the Lord. <laughs> I'm not talking true. Make sure. I remember when I was living in D-Line, I, I, was, I was a barber. I was used to barber. I had my style on then, and then I was also in school. So most times I talk to my customers, and then I move around and I invite some person. Then the church was at St. John's. And so we now have um, appointments, sort of, okay, I'm going to pick you up by um, 7 in the morning or 7.30 in the morning. So in the morning, I will now move and pick them. And I'll get a drop and carry them from the line to St. John's. Praise God. It was, it was every Sunday thing. Glory to God. As it was, it was on every Sunday thing. One of the places we say we are demonstrating faith is to bring souls. You see, the kingdom is about souls. The business of God is about souls. Praise God. Okay, so uh, you do well. That one aspect I want us to do. One aspect I want you to demonstrate your faith this week. Praise God. Or throughout this month. Every Sunday or every of our meeting day. We are going to bring a soul to the Lord. Praise God. Forget about your problems. Do well to God. Make sure you bring somebody to church. <laughs> Amen. What did I say? Just make sure you bring somebody to church. Praise God. Treat it as um, uh, you, are going to give, you are going to be giving a check of a million dollars. Praise God. Praise God. Well, the Lord will surely pay you. He is going to pay you. I don't know what God pays more like bringing souls to the kingdom or investing for his people, for people to receive the redemption that he has already paid for in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. The word is enough because I know we are wise. Precious saints of God, financial prosperity is so crucial and so important in life. So crucial and so important in life to every man that is living in this earth life or still in this earth realm. Whether you are white or black or a people of color, young or old, educated or not, God-fearing or wicked, everyone need money. Why finance is so crucial is because almost our everyday decision revolves around money. It's so crucial that even in the parables, the teachings of Jesus in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, for most of the parables, he used money amen, to illustrate them. That is the crucialness or the crucial nature of money. Praise God. I remember when this 
nation lost lost it to hooligans politically speaking during the reign during the reign of the military and so uh, especially one i could remember vividly from ibb during ibb reign they will do a, one election thing they will cancel it they will do one election thing cancel it the system the corruption was becoming clear not that it's it's, it's established now it was becoming clear and at the point some enlightened persons who were interested in police and got, got fed up and got tired and that was where hooligans entered amen that was where it's like they just left they became disinterested and and the crop of politicians we have today that was when they they entered they, they had a free there was no they just entered praise god praise the living god you see if you don't do something about the issue of money something else that you don't expect will besiege your life something that is not nice will besiege your life and that is not the will of god we have to be serious about the issue of money because money belongs to our god praise the living god money belongs to what wealth comes from where our father glory to god he says silver and gold that should be in haggai chapter 2 verse 8 silver and gold they are mine praise god in psalm 50 verse 10 he said that uh, the cattle upon a thousand hill belongs to me praise the living god And so, if we don't do something about finance, what it means is that, like I mentioned about this, your life, we are leaving it for the children of the devil to take what is ours, to inherit or to possess, or to lay claim to what is originally ours. Money is so crucial because nothing is actually placed side by side with God except money. Mammon is placed side by side with God. Not even Satan is placed side by side with God. It is money. The reason why people serve Satan is because of money. Why people deny God is because of money. The reason, the reason people switch loyalty to Satan is because of mammon. It's because of money. And because they want to have it. It affects virtually every area of life. Women are married to people they are not supposed to get married to because of money. They date people they are not supposed to date because of money. People take decisions they are not supposed to take because of what? Money. They want to have it. There is something about money. The system revolves around this least decision. The kind of school that you want your children to go revolves around money. Some of the purposes you want to execute in life revolves around money. Scripture declares in Zechariah 1 from verse 16 to 17. Say the Lord will return, verse 16. Verse 17 says, Yet through prosperity shall my cities yet spread abroad. Churches that are poor cannot do nothing. Amen? Can do nothing. Remember the other time during the COVID, uh, prior to that, uh, uh, when uh, Christ embassy, they were able to, prior to that, they've been investing and they've been able to establish a whole lot of, uh, um, spend so much money putting um, satellite in orbit, spanning billions of dollars as a result during that time they were able to they were able, when they said we should not go to church they were able to preach to billions of people praise god billions of what people yet through prosperity shall my city spread abroad if you are not thinking of having money you better change your mind if you think that okay let me just think oh, i could just get small money build two bedroom flat I can have little food to eat. I'm okay. You are not okay. You are not okay. That is the height of selfishness. You are here in this earth to advance the kingdom of God. You must make enough money for us to advance the kingdom of God. The least radio program, you know what it is. If you say you have to take, let's say, um, 30 minutes a day for 30 days, you know what it is. It's money. You, you are to be blessed so that you can be a blessing. 
you must have money. I see you having money. I see you increasing money. In the precious name of Jesus. You see, it is your life that the money of God should reflect. Just as every husband, you know, is his wife that is money, his wife and children that the money ref reflects. Praise God. So it is your life that should reflect that our father is wealthy. Amen. And so, since money is so important, I think it's good for us to ask ourselves a very crucial question. Praise the living God. Ask ourselves a very crucial question. Um, how did our fathers get so wealthy? How did the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and the rest, how did they become so wealthy? What were the first steps that they took for them to increase financially? Can I, as a child of God, also become as wealthy as they are? What are the steps I need to take? Can I be so wealthy without staining my hands? What, what do I do? What faith step do I take for me to be like they are, financially speaking, and also to be more? Because God is a God of more. For uh, this, uh, the step of the righteous as a shining light that shines more and more unto a bright day or a perfect day. So our God is a God of more and more. There is no limit that or height that somebody has hit that you cannot hit it and go beyond if your mind, if your faith can carry. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. And so, if our fathers and patriarchs and matriarchs and fathers in the faith became much, okay, how, how do they do it? How can I do it? Because our God um, is what he says to one, he says to all. What is done for one is willing to do for all. And so, how can I get into this so that I can be financially prosperous? Wouldn't it be good if somebody who have rent issues, that have been thrown, the kids are out of school, and maybe they needed about 1.5 million to fix some of these things and they, they are crying. Maybe they are even trying to say, what is the issue? He said, they are crying. And they can do the world, the world. Two million. Amen. Without, with, with, without the problem. Come on, no, see, precious people of God, what Christ paid for is too much for us to be crying about little things. Amen. Amen. See, what he did, what the Father did through Christ is too much. In fact, we should sit down and be crying. Why are we at this level? No. Why are we this small? You see, oh, come on. Why? There is something fundamentally wrong with our approach. We shouldn't be like, you are more than this. 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 Let me tell you something. You should, you should make people's mind to court. I mean, unbelievers' mind to court. When they are coming to church, maybe a Rolls Royce Phantom, all kinds of crazy cars. You are not stressing. I'm not trying to impress anybody. The money is just too much that you just can't but have it. <laughs> Amen. You just can't but what? Have it. You just can't but what? Have it. There is, there is, oh, you're going to see something. There is this footballer, oh, time. Anyway, no problem. And there is footballer, uh, he was not even that very popular. He once played for Arsenal. I remember his name. He later played for AC Milan. Um, one midfielder. Okay, I remember his name. What a popular player. Not a player that you would know, but after he retired, he retired, long retired. He now got an idea how to, something that has to do with this pollution, water, pollution and all that. So they came up, him and one other guy came up with uh, invention of a chemical that could treat some ecosystem stuff. As I'm talking to you now, that guy is worth close to $10 billion. I would remember his name. Oh, it was one of those Arsenal. Eh? Yes, Flamini. Good. Flamini. That guy is super loaded. Echo stuff. Some chemicals will deal with some echo stuff. What, what made you think that you are not better than echo? You got the Holy Ghost. A guy rose. Boom. A billionaire in dollars. That is what we are talking about. Let me, let, let's Let's assume, let's assume that 
you step into that shoe, you are a billionaire. Let me say, you what about 10, 15 billion dollars here? Do you think this church will remain like this? Come on. You could find something to do. What is remaining? <laughs> what is remain to do? Who is hungry? Please tell me. Is anybody hungry? Come on. You, 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 oh. Oh. See, only you will fill the shop. If only you will make us to have five services. Flooded services. I say flooded services. I say flooded service. God is going to use somebody to cause commotion in this house. To cause commotion in this community. In the name of Jesus. The operations of the spirit of God will be so massive and so mighty in your life. Uh, that the community, you, 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 it can't be helped but recognize. That this kingdom, the kingdom of God through this house shall be so impacted. It shall be filled to overflowing. Heaven will clap hand for you. I say heaven will clap hand for you. Just one, one person, the workings of God, the workings of the Spirit of God will be so strong, so massive in your life uh, that heaven will give praise. Heaven will clap hand for you. Matter of fact, Jesus will stand because of you. You are that person, you are that man, you are that woman in the precious name of Jesus. Smiles will come to the faces of families because of you. I say because of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, people will see the heart of God through your presence. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, the heart of God shall be felt uh, through your presence, uh, through your giving, because you have so much. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. You will leave financial burdens in the name of Jesus Christ. You will leave financial yokes in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree today you are too much. I say you are too much. It shall be said in quarters uh, that this person is too much. That the workings of God in your life is too much. That is what it is. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Oh. Let me just see if I'll be able to teach you some things. Or I beg your pardon, we'll be able to learn some stuff today. I know. I know. I know. Okay, so we have, to, we have to allow the scriptures to teach us, to answer us. Amen. How you can prosper using the example of the fathers in the faith and our patriarchs in scriptures. Praise the living God. Number one, how did they prosper like this? Number one, Jeremiah 33 verse 3. What you are going to hear is nothing new. But the Lord will still teach you nonetheless. Through it, we be exalted. Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So, one or the chief way for you to prosper financially is through prayer. Is prayer new? <laughs> not new. Amen. But you see, from this time, you begin to pray intentionally. Praise the living God. Perhaps Michael Flamini, maybe his parents are praying for him. Amen. Or he himself was praying. Praise the living God. And then, boom, the idea came. Glory to God. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. You see, the scripture declares that it is the honor of God to conceal a matter, but the honor of kings to, to, to unravel it. It is you that will find out, Father, I want to prosper. I want to be a blessing. How do I go about it? In a place of prayer. Lord, this poverty is painful. Another thing, you know, and, um, do you do the poverty or the pains of people? Does it really pain you? Or you laugh at people who are going through financial issues? You see, let me tell you something. Some certain attitudes that we put up or we put out will actually affect the flow of the blessings of God when it comes to the issue of finance. If somebody is going through financial issues, and maybe because you are a little... A little better off. You just laugh. Don't mind me. Stupid people. They know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can it be that poor? Eh? You have killed yourself. God forbid. Somebody say, God forbid. Prayer. Have you gone to God in the place of prayer and cried for God to, to fix a financial situation in the life of somebody because you cannot provide the money? Have you done that? Have you spent, let me say, 15 minutes intense prayer praying for a situation, a challenge, the economy of somebody, 
to change and money should begin to flow in somebody's life uh, power of delay to be broken have you done that can you do that if you have not done that then you are not really ready for for the financial prosperity that comes from the lord amen prayer is an act of faith prayer is a life of humility unto God. A life of prayer is a life of humility unto God. It means a life of dependence on the maker. Now we can trace. Let's, okay, um, let's read James chapter 5 before we move. James chapter 5 from verse 13. Read verse 13, then 17 and 18. James chapter 5, verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him what pray. So you can, we can deduce from this famous Bible chapter that the cure for suffering, financial suffering, is prayer. I've heard some men of God say that prayer, you don't need prayer to prosper. Okay, I don't know. Amen. Amen. That is not true prayer that you prosper. But the Spirit of God made us say, anyone among you suffering, how do I know it is suffering? Okay, if we read, okay, it's, okay. is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Go, go on to verse 14 before we jump. Is any among you sick? Let me call for the elders of the church. So you can see how it is categorized. So when it said, is anyone afflicted? That's what you're talking about. A financial issue. Praise God. It's a financial issue. So let him pray. Is any afflicted? Is anyone suffering? Let him pray. Prayer is a cure. For financial affliction is a cure for poverty. It, it is through prayer that you will come out of poverty. If not for prayer, people like us who don't have a chance, so small chance we will not get because nothing in, is happening in the flesh. It can create something. So Jacob was able to create a portal that enabled divine interferences into his life. If God they visit you, eh? you're not going to know what to tell him. You're not going to know what to tell him. So, through prayers, he created a portal and there was movements from, of God to him. And that was why he said, wow, this is a fearful place. This is the house of God. shall be called Bethel. This is none other than the gates of heaven. Somebody say prayers. His life changed that day. That was where his life changed, the place of prayer. Every other thing was a manifestation. Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay. So, um, as a man of faith, it is actually faith for you to devote your time. I pray. What are you praying for? You're praying for finances. Lord, what do I do? Lord, where do I go? What do I do to become this much? What step do I take? What, what service do I render to this, to humanity that will take me there? In the place of prayer. Are you listening to me now? One day, the light will shine. Bah, this is what to do. The Lord, like talk about uh, Flamini, the Lord showed him, you Satan, what to do. The ecosystem that you have to bring in some, uh, um, some of your understanding to bring about cleansing and to make the system better. That is the creation of God. God doesn't want the system to be destroyed like what is happening here in the South, South, and this nation and in Africa. Where the ecosystem is most destroyed. What about our people? Group our people, we saw our people, some of them were, most of them were fishermen. Now you can, the, the, the rivers are covered with oil. Are you talking about uh, non degradable materials? You know, uh, tapolins and rubber bottles and all kinds of stuff that are in their millions that go down to the sea. We we'll throw them in the gutter and go down to the sea. It's, 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 it's destroying our ecosystem. And so, God can give you idea to bring that change to correct the ecosystem in this, our south side in this country. And you'll be a trillionaire. You'll be what? That is the true money we are talking about. You'll be what? A trillionaire. You'll be what? A trillionaire. Glory to God. Glory to God. So that is how your prayer should be. You are praying for God to reveal you the path that you should follow. The path 
pattern that you should follow. Where to go? That is what you are praying for. The light will come. Ha, oh, come on. It will come. It will come. And that is the beginning of your greatness financially. I see you rise in the name of Jesus. Number two, you must know and be conscious you are prosperous financially by faith. Let's have Genesis 39 verse 2. Genesis 39 verse 2. Oh, oh, shalaba. Whatever time permit me, we'll stop. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful or prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. He knew he was prosperous. He knew. And that was why even in his father's house, he'd be saying, say, ah, it was, yeah, your star I was bowing down to my star. This one and this one. He never talked less. He never talked less than who he was. He was actually speaking who he was. Praise the living God. One of the ways to manifest financial prosperity, you must be conscious that you are financially prosperous. Our text says, he, um, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. That you, through his poverty, will become rich. You see, that thing was actually a legal situation. You see, poverty came upon mankind because of what happened, the fall. And so, God himself has to come in the flesh for that situation to be fixed. That sin, the penalty has to be paid by God himself in the human form. When the penalty was paid fully, when all the demand of justice was met, and Jesus rose from the grave, or he was raised from the grave, at that moment, you now have a legal right to enjoy divine, uh, divine uh, um, prosperity. You now have the legal right to prosper financially, boundlessly, limitlessly. It, it because it's legal. You see, because the sin was a legal situation. And it has to be paid for, and it has been paid. Now you now have the legal right. So you must know that now, legally, spiritually and physically, you have the right to prosper. So the powers in your father's house cannot stop you. The powers in your mother's house cannot stop you. Except you don't understand that legally speaking from the source, the owner of wealth, you are now being legalized to prosper. You are not what legalized. So the operations of the kingdom of darkness or demons in father's house and mother's house, the operations are actually illegal. And so that is why you can deal with it in prayer. See, the, what, the, the scripture is a legal book. It's a legal book. A legal book. The spiritual legitimacy. You are spiritually legitimized to flourish financially. To flourish financially. So this, you must be conscious of this. You must know this. And because, you see, when you know it, you are conscious. When you are praying for it or against any power challenging your money, your financial prosperity, you are praying from that realm. And the realm of the spirit knows it. The impact will be felt. But when you don't know it, the prayer does not have weight. Gatula akumba asadush. I speak to the powers in my father's house from today. Hear the word of the Lord. I have been legitimized. I, 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 I have the legitimacy from the Lord Jesus Christ, from the accomplished work of Christ to prosper. Therefore, my monies that you are sitting on, that you have diverted, I command you to release it back to me. I insist. I command you to comply in the name of Jesus. Stay there. He must. He must. He must give it to you. So he says, speak to the north. Give it up. To the south. Give it up. It must give up. Why? It is a legal situation. A legitimate situation. You see, God is, God is so, oh, God is so good that he is God. He didn't just say, okay, after all, I'm God. Satan, come on. The human, human being that created, and I created them. Even though they say, right now, they are free. No. God was good to Satan, was good to man, and was good to himself. Oh, let me put out now. God was just to Satan, just to man, and just to himself. Praise God. How was he just to Satan? The soul that sinned shall die. So Satan is coming to enforce that thing. And so God has to pay the price, amen, of that sin which he fell. Praise the living God. And so he was also just to man, having paid the price. He has conferred that, that right of the price being paid to man. 
That's why the Bible says, he that knew no sin became sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. So man have, have that right by virtue of what Christ has done. That's why it is called faith. To now function in the earth with it, prosper with it. Are you listening to me now? So God was also just to man. And then that is number two, and was also just to himself. Praise the living God. When the full demands of justice had been met, fully paid, when all the demand of justice has been paid, then what can stop God from blessing the one that the demand of justice has already been satisfied? After all, Nahim, we sin against. And justice, you know, uh, is, has been declared that he has paid the price. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. So he met, he met these three key situations. It was just to God, I was just to Satan, just to man, and just to himself. So now man stands qualified to prosper stupidly. Amen. Number three, divine direction. Divine direction. You see, one of the ways we see that our fathers in the faith prospered is by divine direction. Now, we, it's as if to get direction from God, it's as if it is strange. It, sh it shouldn't be so. It sh do you know that even our politicians, who to support, they'll go and consult. <laughs> they go and consult. Who do we? Jagaban or Atiku? They consult. It's not a laughing matter. They consult, they consult, they consult, they consult, they consult, they consult. The oracle, you speak, okay? This is the person that is, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, the, the place where your wealth is, you have to consult the one who has prepared for you. You have to. We must learn to. If it takes you one full year, pray in that prayer, brother, sister, Pray it. Just keep praying it. Once you get it, you've got it. You, the way you go take fly past, people will be like, say they don't go ahead of you. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, look at it now. Elijah, the Bible says, he was in Mount Carmel, a man of prayer. Having prayed earnestly. And then the king Ahab, he told him, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Enter your chariot and move to Jezreel. And the man entered the chariot, what we we'll call like cars today. And he was moving. And then the man on, on foot got up and outran chariots. Why? He has, he has infused himself with the energy of the spirit. Praise the living God. Kai, Shatwa, Ali, Skuba. When you get it from God, one year is too much for you to be a phenomenon. You are a financial phenomenon. One year is too much for you to be what? A financial phenomenon. The greatest project, the greatest thing that ever happened in this planet is a human being. Nine months is, is the time, conception. There is nothing that took up the year. Nine months, the most important creation is human being. It takes nine months to conceive and to give birth. There is nothing, there is no height that you cannot get to within one year. One year is too much. One year. If you can get it with God. Amen. It is faith for you to wait until you get it. You get the light. The next move to make. It is faith for you to wait and get it. Hallelujah. You must have it. Your heavens are open. The light is shining on you. In the name of Jesus. Darkness is past. In the name of Jesus Christ. You must have. You must be divinely directed. And so, let's look at the scriptures and show you a, uh, a couple of men that they prospered simply by direction. A great man of God um, in the U.S., blessed memory, Kennedy Hagin, they asked him, how do you get things done so cheaply? He said, we do nothing except commanded. I do nothing except commanded. Glory to God. Okay, let's have um, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Hello. Genesis 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. We'll read to verse 3. 
to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and will cause him who causes you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So from verse 2 and verse 3, you see the blessing that will come. But it's contingent upon verse 1 until he moves. The blessings in verse 2 and verse 3 will not become his, his as has been pronounced by God. Are you listening to me? And so you and I know Abraham obeyed the Lord. The rest is history. Was he big? Was he big? Oh. Let, 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 let me. You see, if you want to truly prosper financially, you must take divine direction seriously. Praise the living God. You see, the difference between those who are very, very successful financially and those who are not, they are, is divine direction. They may not even know it, some of them. Is what? Is divine direction. In fact, all your trainings, all your education is at the mercy of divine direction. Praise the living God. It can be so, so, so ordinary with so much education without divine direction. And another person without much education and have direction and will become mega. That will not be your portion. I said that will not be your portion. In the precious name of Jesus. The voice of the Lord will not be strange to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Okay. And so we saw that Abraham was divinely directed. Praise the living God. Uh, let's look at I, uh, Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 4. Genesis 26, verse 1 to 4. There was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Go on. Dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you for to you and your descendants I will give all these lands. And I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. Finally, verse 4. And I will make your descendants multiply like the stars of heaven and I will give, I will give to your descendants all these lands and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Shall be blessed. So we saw that uh, Abraham was blessed because he adhered to divine direction. Isaac here in this text that we read, he wanted to, he contemplated going to, to Egypt. Just as many people are, want to go to Europe, want to go to US, everybody want to run out of this country. Well, good, but most of the people who are planning this travel, they have not even asked God, should I really go there? Amen. And some people will go there and be stranded. Some people will go there and become poorer than they left. Praise the living God. It's not for everybody. But be sure that you are directed. And so, he was planning to go. Thank God for divine. The Lord said, don't go. Stay in this, in this place. In Gera. Stay here. And I will bless you. And he obeyed. He stayed. And the Lord blessed him. Within one year, this guy became too much. And we are talking money here this morning. Financially. He became too much. Simply by the direction of the spirit. So we saw, we, we've seen how a Abraham became so massive. Okay, um, let me read the scripture for Abraham, uh, Genesis 24. Let's have Genesis 24. Verse 1. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Can you see that? God has blessed him in all things. Based on the direction, the leading of the spirit in chapter 12, which he obeyed by verse 24, he has become too much. The Lord said, he has blessed him in what? In all things. Not only money. In what? In all things. That is, you look like this, or there is no, you don't have any. You think of money, you think of children, you think of health, every, you, you, you are, everything you have it. There is so much money, yet you don't even know what to do with the money again. You get, you get what I'm saying? Healthy. Children, or, or they themselves, they are billionaires. You look around. What do I need to buy? Oh, you, think, oh, you, do, you, you don't have me. There is money every day. God has blessed Abraham in all things. That will be your portion. I said that has become your portion. And so we can see how you surely will prosper when you follow divine direction. Cities where we live, they are crucial. 
places where we live, they are crucial. We cannot just get up and say, now, nah, I want to go and live in Abuja. Now, nah, I want to go and live in California. No. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. David says, should I go? Should I pursue? Shall we overtake? Shall we overcome? Shall we recover all? The Lord said, go. You will surely overtake. You will surely recover. So, because in moment of challenge, what are you going to depend on? It is the word of the Lord. David was going, knowing fully well, that the Lord has told him that you will surely overtake them. You will recover all. You are going without a word. When you go there and meet one little challenge, you get confused. But it doesn't matter the challenge you meet. When you have been directed, you know that you are going with this word. No challenge can deter you. I've got a word. Say, I will recover all. I've got everything. I will deal with them. And that was exactly what happened. They were fighting. They were fainting. And they were fighting. <laughs> They were fainting and they were fighting. There was one night vision we had here. The kind of sleep. <laughs> Jesus. Now, see, he said I was doing that. <laughs> My God. You see? <laughs> we, were, oh, we were sleeping. We were sitting there. I said, My God. <laughs> you see? But, you know, in, in situations like that, what it means is that the impact in the spirit is more. So the devil just wants to find a way to just weaken what the impact is just too much. Praise the living God. Amen. So I may be out of four or five hours. If you're able to pray one hour, effectively it's enough. If it is 30 minutes, able to pray. No worry. Stay there and sleep. Wake up and pray. It's enough. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when you are when you are doing divine direction, it doesn't matter what you experience you will come back with a testimony i say you will come back with a testimony in the precious name of jesus christ and so um let's see genesis 28 verse 1 to 4 genesis 28 1 to 4 oh glory then isaac called jacob and blessed him and charged him and said to him you shall not take a wife from the daughters of canaan Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, your mother's father, and take yourself a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. Okay, verse 3. May God Almighty bless you, make you fruitful, say prayers, and multiply you, that you may be an assembly of people. Finally, verse 4. And give you the blessing of Abraham to you and to your descendants with you, that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger, which God gave to your father. You see, for you to become something in a strange land, it's a, it takes power. <laughs> for you to become something in another place, it take, look at what happened here. He has to be injected with the blessing. With prayer. They have to bath him. <laughs> you know those those days, whether they bath person, like those days when they do traditional wrestling, some of the, the ones that the one that are champions of the community, they go, they go bath and juju, then they bath, they go, they go pour things on his head. Now bath, then they bath for you to go because that champion there, even you're doing hand like this, he don't cut you off. So they get to infuse you with demons. Oh, come on. He don't understand. It's the same thing. So the father had to infuse him. Remember, already his brother was already angry. He was going to kill him. Arabs. They need to play. Arabs. <laughs> For to kill. So already that one is there. The father has to inject him. Go there and then place the blessing. Because the blessing is a deterrent to affliction. When the, the blessing is on you, any person that attempts your life, the person is finished. So they, they buffered the blessing. And then he was released. Is it any wonder that he had those encounters? His prayers. Praise God. Is what? Is what? Okay. Go, uh, go back to the scripture. Genesis 28 verse 4. And, and give you the blessing of Abraham. And to you. at the end of the day, was he blessed at all? So when the father prayed for him and released him, he went. Someone said direction. He left. He didn't say, what is this? He moved. Glory to God. 
And the man, after all said, several things happened, as you know, in scripture, the guy became massive. He became what? Mighty. Glory to God. He became what? Mighty. On the basis of what? Divine direction. Number four, five, uh, maybe I will end on the examples of men who prospered by divine direction. We'll stop here for, for that aspect today. Genesis 41, 1 to 4. The fourth person I will choose, uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Genesis 41. From verse 1. Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream, and behold, he stood by the river. We'll read to verse 4. Suddenly, there came up out of the river seven cows, fine looking and fat, and they fed in the medium. Verse 3. Then, behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river, ugly, gaunt, I sleep, stood by the other cows on the river, on the bank of the river. Verse 4. And the ugly and the slim cows ate up the seven fat cows. Fine looking fat cows. And so Pharaoh awoke. One key thing that happened there, as they ate up, they, they look, in fact, they look slimmer. They didn't look as if they are, they are eating anything. And Pharaoh awoke. The same thing, the dream was repeated twice. You see, an unbeliever. I said, What is this? God is surely saying something to me. And he began the search to know what God was saying. And so called the magicians of Egypt, they could do nothing. And Pharaoh, I mean, Joseph came on the scene based on recommendation. Praise the living God. And Joseph gave a download by the inspiration of the spirit of the living God. A download of what the dream truly was and what to do for Pharaoh to become richer than he already was. Richer. Seven years of abundance. It's going, to, it's going to precede seven years of wicked scarcity. What are you going to do with the seven years of abundance? By the Spirit of God, he knew that 20% of the produce will be saved. If they can save 20% of the produce of each year for that seven years of abundance, it will cut up for the seven years of lack and make him the richest king, the richest man on earth, and the richest nation. And so what it means is that they have to begin to think of how to invent equipment to preserve food. The Spirit of God also gave him, there they started, Joseph, I want to believe, was the first who started the, 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 the manufacture or the production of things like silos, what the technology they used to preserve cement. Or from then that Jacob got it, and so they preserve it, they preserve the food, and it covered like the spirit of God has given. And Pharaoh became too much. Egypt also became what? Too much. The money was too much for counting. Praise the living God. And so, Pharaoh, the question is, Pharaoh was conscious of divine direction. Pharaoh was conscious of the leading of the spirit of God. Pharaoh was more conscious. Why was Pharaoh choosing? God look at the heart. Some children of God who care nothing. How many directions God have given to you how many instructions that God has given to you that would have changed your life? Not only your life, but maybe your city or your nation. You never took seriously. You never took seriously. I, 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 I know a, a lady many years ago, whatever. I said, John, I don't, then I said, John, I don't like spiritual things. I don't like anything, anything spiritual. Somebody come and tell me spiritual things. I don't like it. I said, really? Why? I, said, I just like natural things. I said, wow. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. So Pharaoh loved, honors direction that come from the Lord. No wonder he became so rich. And by extension, the people of God benefited and became so rich. Joseph became so, so rich because somebody was willing to honor the direction from the Spirit of God. I think one of the prayers I'm going to pray this morning, I'm going to stop here so that we don't close it. One of the prayers you are going to pray this morning. It's for discernment. Why did Pharaoh, why, how did he know that that dream means something serious? That he now began to prod how to know the meaning and, and then how to 
you know, carry out the instruction that will come and say this. How, how, how did he? There is a heart that discerns, and there is a heart that have respect for spiritual things. And there is a heart that I don't have regard. I beg. It's not a good heart. Amen. Okay, this morning you are here. We are talking about prosperity. We are not talking about we are talking about financial prosperity in the order of God. We are not talking about general loop. So please get me right. We are talking about we want to prosper God's way. So we try to show you how the people of God prospered. They became billionaires. We saw that uh, King um, 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 there is so much I did not touch. Um, Solomon. Amen. Solomon loved the Lord. For you to prosper, one of the ways that you must love the Lord. The Bible says Solomon loved the Lord. And as a result, he responded to that love of God by giving the Lord one night. A thousand born of... He wasn't looking for anything, actually. A thousand cows. If they bring hundred cows, okay, you want to go and give a sacrifice to, to God in church. See, I want... I really want to give God a massive sacrifice. Thank you. And so, and so you decide to bring cows. If you bring, if you bring, if you bring just hundred, just just hundred cows, there will be no road, no road. Um, see, of course, you know the kind of cow that Solomon would have given. Not all these small, small. They had to be heavy. If you bring heavy, those cows, like a hundred, those cows, at the least you can get it. The least is one million. Yeah, it will be more than that. And you're bringing hundred. That is what a hundred million. Multiply it by, um, multiply it by a thousand cows. What you have is one billion. T uh, transportation exclusive. They are coming to give. Cause it is. This man, your love for me is crazy. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave. What, what can you really give to the Lord? You see, look at the men. They are sacrificial. And the Lord said, ah, my son Solomon, what do you want me to do for you? And look at Solomon. Just, okay, actually I'm too young. I'm very young. And look at your people. I have to know how to judge them. Just help me. You did not even ask for wealth. You did not ask for long life or the life of your enemies. But you asked for how to be able to take care of my people. You must develop a, a concern for God's people and his kingdom. If you want to, if you must prosper. You must develop what? Concern for God's people and his kingdom. On, on the ground of that, God said, Kai! All right. I give you a wise heart that none before your time has gotten it. And the one that you did not ask, well, take it. Praise the living God. How did it come? He sacrifice. It was a response. The sacrifice was a response to the love. And Solomon loved the Lord. First Kings chapter 3. Solomon loved the Lord. And he demonstrated by giving. You cannot turn back on the needs of God's people when you have been enabled by God and expect God to keep giving you more so that you will increase in wickedness. No, no. It's not like that. Praise the living God. God, you see, like for men of God, the anointing that is given to them is not even for them. It's not for them. It's for the people. Praise God. So for you to experience blessing from the Lord, you have to. I was terribly sick. We came back from the bed yesterday. I said, where is this sickness coming from? I said, it's not possible. Amen. It's not so, but I have to get Healed by my faith in the word of God. Not by the anointing of God upon my life. By what? By my own faith. For the just shall live by their own faith. Praise God. Oh. That was faith in action for Solomon. Please, let's rise to our feet. Guys. We, we just got to stop. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh. And you have not received Christ. What we are talking about does not really concern you. We are talking about the people that God will talk to. 
We are talking about the people that God will indwell and instruct. This is an opportunity for you to be reconciled to him. John chapter 1, I believe, verse 12, for as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as received him, to them he gave them the right to become the sons of God. This is an opportunity for you to become a son, a child of God. If you are willing to receive him this morning, say after me, my father, I thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. I declare that he died for me and on the third day he was raised, having justified me. With my heart I believe and with my mouth I confess that Jesus is my Lord. He is my Savior. I confess I am now a child of God. I have eternal life in my spirit. I am now saved. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I pray for you if you have prayed that prayer for the first time. As, me, uh, as many that come to him, then he will in no wise cast out. The grace that keeps men in Christ, that keeps men in God. Let that same grace be activated in you in the name of Jesus. The love of God that shocks, that intoxicates more than the love of a man and a woman. Let that love be activated in your soul in the precious name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Pray that prayer for the first time, please. When you get to, you, you do well to um, meet our